There's Voyager crossing over into interstellar space. Voyager accomplished its mission so brilliantly and now goes on. When Neil deGrasse Tyson appeared on a recent segment of a well-known science program, he dropped a revelation that immediately rippled through both the scientific community and the public sphere. Voyager 1, humanity's farthest reaching probe, has reportedly detected over 300 massive objects in deep space, an astonishing development that adds an entirely new dimension to our understanding of the cosmos. This moment didn't just represent a fascinating data point from a 46-year-old spacecraft, it signaled the possibility of a fundamental shift in our perception of what lies beyond the heliopause and potentially far beyond even that. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. Voyager 1, launched in 1977, has traveled billions of miles from Earth and is now venturing through interstellar space. Its mission has already surpassed every conceivable expectation, but this latest transmission changes the game. According to Tyson, the probe sensors picked up gravitational anomalies and electromagnetic fluctuations associated with hundreds of colossal structures, each more enigmatic than the last. These objects do not resemble anything cataloged in previous astronomical surveys. They are not comets, not rogue planets, and not wandering asteroids. Their sizes, according to data interpretations, range from the scale of minor moons to planetary mass bodies, yet their behaviors defy the laws we currently use to define such celestial entities. Tyson described how the array of data points indicated that these objects exhibited unusual motion patterns. Instead of traveling in predictable elliptical trajectories shaped by nearby gravitational bodies, many of these objects moved in sharply angular paths or hovered for prolonged periods before darting away at unexplainable velocities. This challenges the fundamental Newtonian principles governing celestial motion. These behaviors are not just anomalies, they are statistical outliers so extreme that they demand a new framework of physics to understand them fully. The implications are staggering. For one, the presence of 300 such massive entities in a relatively compact spatial region, at least by interstellar standards, suggests a concentration of matter that should not exist in the cold, sparse expanses beyond the solar system. The immediate question is, what are these objects, and why are they clustered here? The density is simply too high to be random, leading some astrophysicists to propose that we might be looking at the edge of a hitherto unseen structure, possibly a colossal molecular cloud that escaped earlier detection, or even something far more exotic. Tyson emphasized the need for caution, stressing that while the data is unambiguous in recording these mass signatures, the interpretation of that data is still evolving. Nonetheless, the possibility that these objects may be artificially constructed has quietly entered the conversation among theoretical physicists. Some of the energy emissions detected around the anomalies show regular pulse patterns and radio wave formations that bear a striking resemblance to early simulations of Dyson spheres, hypothetical megastructures built by advanced civilizations to harness the energy output of stars. While it's premature to leap to such conclusions, the mere suggestion elevates the stakes of this discovery. These signals, emitted across a range of frequencies, don't match any known natural source. The strength, consistency, and modulation patterns are perplexing. Natural pulsars emit regular signals too, but these are far more refined, showing complex modulation akin to frequency shifting, something seen in human-engineered technology. Moreover, Voyager 1's long-range magnetometers recorded sharp drops and spikes in the interstellar magnetic fields surrounding the objects, a signature inconsistent with inert mass drifting through space. These magnetic shifts hint at the possibility that these objects are not merely present. They are active. Another puzzle lies in the absence of associated thermal signatures. Massive bodies generally emit some form of infrared radiation, either from internal processes or from residual heat collected over billions of years of cosmic exposure. Yet these objects seem to absorb or redirect energy in a way that renders them effectively invisible to conventional thermal sensors. Some researchers speculate that these could be cloaked masses, using forms of matter or energy absorption techniques unknown to us. This type of stealth, if natural, would revolutionize our understanding of matter. If artificial, it could indicate intelligent design on a scale previously considered science fiction. 
The spatial arrangement of the objects is another enigma. Preliminary models indicate a geometric alignment that defies chaotic distribution. A number of the masses appear to be evenly spaced in a radial configuration, stretching outward like the arms of a spiral. This organization cannot be easily attributed to gravitational dynamics alone. Such structure implies either an underlying gravitational framework, perhaps tethered to an unseen central mass, or a deliberate spatial distribution maintained by active propulsion or orbit-keeping mechanisms. Either explanation would rewrite our assumptions about what lies beyond our solar neighborhood. In addition to their physical properties, the electromagnetic signals continued to evolve. Over the course of several weeks, Voyager 1 recorded slight shifts in the timing and frequency modulation of these emissions, as if the source were adapting or responding to environmental conditions, or to the probe itself. Tyson pointed out that if this pattern continues, it could represent the first recorded case of a non-random response to a human-made object beyond the heliopause. That suggestion opens the door to one of the most provocative questions in human history. Are we finally detecting signs of intelligent life? Even if the objects are not artificial, their sheer size and behavior challenge every current model of celestial mechanics. One possibility is that they represent a form of interstellar matter aggregation we've never seen, proto-worlds coalescing under unusual conditions, perhaps involving dark matter scaffolding or exotic particle interactions. Their ability to remain gravitationally independent despite proximity also raises questions about the local curvature of space-time in that region. Could this cluster be the edge of a localized distortion? A minor warp in the fabric of the cosmos? If so, the consequences for cosmology would be profound. Neil deGrasse Tyson, known for his ability to distill complex scientific concepts into compelling narrative, conveyed the awe and measured optimism felt by the astrophysics community. While cautioning against jumping to conclusions, he did not hide his excitement. After all, the universe has a way of surprising us just when we think we've begun to map its boundaries. The detection of 300 massive objects in an area where our models predicted virtual emptiness is not just unexpected, it is revolutionary. Beyond the pure scientific ramifications, this detection may alter how humanity views its place in the cosmos. For decades, Voyager 1 has represented a human fingerprint etched into the void. It carries our music, our languages, and our hopes into interstellar space. That it may now be brushing up against entities or phenomena far beyond our technological understanding imbues the mission with a new kind of poetic gravitas. It's no longer merely an emissary of Earth, it could be our first witness to the architecture of the unknown. Speculation abounds about the origins of these objects. Could they be remnants of a long dead civilization? Colossal husks left to drift for eternity? Are they beacons, way stations, or outposts dotting a corridor through space? Or are they natural phenomena, sculpted by laws of physics that have yet to be discovered? Each scenario fuels a separate stream of research, each one as vital as the last. High-energy astrophysics labs are now recalibrating their models and new telescope arrays are being tasked with scanning the region of space from which Voyager 1 is relaying its data. The fact that these signals came from the deep interstellar medium, far removed from the influence of the sun's magnetic field, also provides a clearer window into their nature. Without solar interference, the data is cleaner, more detailed, and harder to dismiss as noise. Tyson explained that this opens the door for further interstellar probes to be designed specifically to investigate such phenomena, possibly marking the beginning of a new era of cosmic exploration. The possibility of this being a region with higher than average matter density also reinvigorates interest in dark matter detection. These objects could be partially composed of dark matter or interacting with it in ways we have not yet theorized. If so, this region might offer the best laboratory in which to test long-held hypotheses about one of physics' greatest mysteries. The gravitational anomalies observed may be the first step in triangulating the properties of dark matter in a real-world context, outside of simulations and particle accelerators. There's also the tantalizing notion that this is not an isolated event. If Voyager 1 has encountered such a phenomenon in just one direction, what else might be out there scattered in other parts of the galaxy simply beyond our current field of detection?
This introduces an urgency to develop new deep space monitoring tools that can scan for similar anomalies in other regions. It also redefines the purpose of future missions, which may now prioritize anomaly hunting over traditional planetary science. The discoveries raise more questions than they answer. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us. What are your thoughts on Voyager 1 detecting 300 massive objects in space? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.